Brian again. Finally, got my group together again, and we even had to play with uh, a couple of folks missing. So we've kind of decided that as long as we have a majority, you know, three of the five players, that we'll go ahead and play anyway, because <laughs> otherwise we'll never get this campaign done. Okay. Um, so when we started uh, last night, had the map board out and had the whole room sections were there involved in all drawn out and staged out all the PCs and where they were. Um, so there was a um, a piece that I had missed, and I'll get this in my other video. So um, after everybody's all set up, there's a reaction force that comes out. There's a uh, door near the south of the room that opens up and out comes this guy in, in plate armor with a two-handed spear. Down the hallway is another door. It pops open and out jump four archers. Archers move up. The whole party kind of surrounds the, uh, the plate mail guy and are attacking him. They rolled fairly low on their initiative, so there were a lot of attacks coming out first. Um, with an 18 armor class, you know, it wasn't exactly safe, but uh, some of the some of the folks weren't able, some of the PCs weren't able to hit. But on his first attack with his two-handed spear, he fumbles, drops his spear, loses his other two attacks. Uh, the archers shoot a couple times, they move up, they shoot some more, another one fumbles, ends up shooting the guy in the plate mail uh, for some more damage. While this conglomeration is going on, um, there's this huge beast that comes barreling down the hallway from the south. Now, Aloysius, the imp, happens to be at a crossroads intersection in that hallway, and that's where the bullet, sort of was a bullet stopped. Um, and so trying to figure out what this thing is, because um, my map board, you know, is a four hex creature. He's huge, right? And it goes barreling down. But Aloysius is there, and obviously I know a lot of the players know what a boulette is, so I'm, the last thing I'm going to say is it's a boulette. But uh, uh, they're trying to figure it out, so uh, Grant, the player who's um, Warlock, has Aloysius the uh, familiar uh, in the hallway, says, well, what does it look like? So oh, it's big. Is it shiny? Is it whatever? Well, it's kind of shiny. It's got huge legs. <laughs> and then uh, he asks what it is. And none of the players would have run into a boulet before. But I decided, well, maybe Aloysius had. So I had him make an uh, intelligence roll. And he rolled like a 19. So, okay, yeah, he goes, it's a boulet. And he says, it's a boulet. It's a huge land shark. It's going to eat us all. We're going to die. And so at that the party starts disengaging and fleeing to the north out of uh, the uh, Elemental Earth Temple. Uh, in the process of all this happening, the boulette does get to get a leap uh, into the room, lands on the half-orc barbarian, who was actually the last one to disengage, and uh, he was able to make his roll to get out of the way, so he only took partial damage. And meanwhile, the archers are continuing to fire at everybody as they're leaving. Uh, so they get a few more hits on the Barbarian. I don't think they're able to hit anybody else because, you know, just angles and things happening. But essentially, they, they chase them out. They get to the edge of the, the cavern, the bridge, take the last few shots at the Barbarian as he ducks into the hall, hallway. And everybody's just running down the tunnel to get to the bottom of the stairs. I really thought those Hobgoblins were going to kill him off. But uh, between initiative rolls and them deciding to just flee, they got away. Good on them. <laughs> Live to fight another day. Um, sorry, I'm just checking my notes here to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, once they um, get to the stairs, they have a huge discussion on, should they take a short rest? Do they want to take a long rest down here? Or do they just go up and try and deal with the Orog, try and get the Orog to go down into the temple so they can just book it out of the monastery completely without any any issues um, they kind of decide to run the story of the temple's under attack they need to go down and help and uh the pcs are these weak cultists and can't do anything so they'll guard the prisoners for them now the orog's not going to say take that for what it's worth um 
I did envision him sending uh, the ogre to go see what's going on, and maybe one of the Oran. Uh But uh, they're a little fishy with the whole party thing, because when they came down, um, they're fleeing earth cultists who were attacking the monastery. They're going to go down the temple to see Marlow to try and get him to you know get a reaction force to take the monastery back. Well, well, the party was down in the dungeon. The Orogs went to check out what was going on upstairs, and sure enough, they find all these bodies and stuff. Um, and they also run into uh, Jeffrey and Shavra. Uh, Jeffrey and Shavra aren't going to fight three Orogs on their own, so they book it out. Their plan, well, they got they got to the mounts, they set the hippogriffs to go home, and then they took the two giant vultures and flew down to Waterdeep to you know address her family's issues because he said he would do do that for the party. You know, we're gonna get her back and verify with the family that she's okay. Uh so they'll do that. I haven't decided yet if the family's gonna try and hold her or not. Um uh, but eventually you know they'll get back out. Uh the party gets up and interacts with the orcs the uh, uh, shower. Lady Jovishai kicks open the door and starts screaming about being attacked. The temple's under attack. You need to get down there and help out. We barely skipped our lives. They're coming after us. And all this kind of stuff. And then she falls down. Um, uh, she has uh, Aloysius the Imp appear and start coming towards her. Like he's attacking her. And she's scuttering backwards. And she does a uh, minor illusion of um, Thurl, the captain of the Feathergate Spire, his voice saying, We're up here! Get him! Get him! And then lots of footsteps running. At that, I had the PCs roll to see if they knew what was going on, and uh, they didn't. So they all start freaking out, running the room. Everybody starts booking up the stairs with this whole confusion going on with the illusion and Aloysius. Um, the Orogs, when he sees Aloysius, um, goes to block all the doorways to lock him in. He disappears into his pocket dimension and the last of the PCs are running up the stairs. I was kind of wishy-washy on that, but it I let it go. They get upstairs. They call around for, for Shavra and, and Jeffrey and can't you know find them anywhere. They don't really do an in-depth search, in-depth search. They just kind of search around as they're you know going through on the way out. Nothing. So they go to where the animals were and see there's nothing there and they all get well they all most of them get really upset, thinking that Shaw and Jeffrey had double crossed them, that kind of thing. And what are they going to do now? Well, this I well, let's go to the, the spire and, and see if they're there. So they trek cross country over to the spire. They get there, they talk with Thurl. Um, the hippogriffs came back, but uh, Shaw and Jeffrey didn't show, and neither have their um, their mounts. And for a while, the PCs thought that maybe the Orogs had gone upstairs and captured them, uh, or killed them, maybe. So that was a, a possibility. So they kind of verified that maybe something that they're probably not captured, but maybe they have been. Um, and then they got this story going in their head about, well, maybe Jeffrey is running away with Shavra. They're star-crossed lovers, and they're going to go off and, and make a new life for themselves somewhere. And a lot of GMs will jump on that and make that happen. But that's just not how I see those two. <laughs> so I already know what's going to happen with those two. Uh, from there, they head back to Red Larch. They get a spiel on what's been happening. Kind of stasis. They're still trying to hunt down the rest of the believers, and they're still trying to fill in and cover up the, uh, the sinkhole. Um, I made a couple of rolls. Um, they're, they're trying to find some rumors and stuff. Nothing's really happened there, but the, um, the uh, Tempest Priest at the uh, All Faith Shrine has been getting word of increased orc attacks north in, of the the uh, vale or valley um you know north up by uh shoot what's it called belly be, belliard belliard up by belliard which was the last place that the mirabar delegation had been seen so they think okay we'll go up to belliard See if we can fit anything more on the Mirbar delegation, and if nothing else, then we can deal with these orcs because we can handle orcs. We may not be able to handle the bullet and hobgoblins, but we can handle orcs. Um, so next day they travel cross country. Takes them a couple of days to get up there. 
the first day they do end up running into some into a party of gnolls who you know ambushed them they took care of them fairly easily and that was enough to uh get the the barbarian and the warlock to level five everybody else is level four uh, just before they get to Bel Belliard, they run into a uh, Uthark tribe hunting party. And the way I read them was, you know, violence. So they did the same thing, an ambush kind of deal. But uh, Lady Jobashai, when she picked up fifth level, got hypnotic trance. And so she did her thing. And uh, one guy was outside the range, and the other one, and one of the other ones made a saving throw. So only two folks can actually do anything. One guy sees what's happening and takes off. The other guy didn't really recognize that and is attacking because that's what the plan was they pop up and attack so we moved to attack and he got killed <laughs> uh, they kind of check out the barbarians see if there's anything on them they just you know see their elk uh utharks and you know that's about it and then they get into belly yard they go to the inn um ask around a little bit find out about this thing with the uh ice orcs uh this half elf fellow is staying with some uh family friends here in town he's recovering from injuries of his attack so that's kind of where we ended uh, that we were all staged for okay next time we get to play we're going to go and find what's going with these ice orcs and that gives me focus uh, for my next preparation which is handy okay well it was a fairly quick there's a lot of side talk going on and some other stuff uh, that i'll deal with in, in my other videos but that was pretty much the scenario they escaped from <laughs> the temple they escaped from the monastery uh they went to the spire found out you know shavra and and jeffrey are still out somewhere went to red large got a hook to head up north went north had a couple of random encounters and we're all set for an next session now all in all not too bad you guys have a happy gaming